so you've been running Celebrate Recovery for the last three and a half years, and a half I think years. you said. Yep. Okay. And, and talk a little bit about what Celebrate Recovery is for people out here who, who don't know. Okay. So uh, what we do at Celebrate Recovery is we, uh, you know, it's, it's it's a step process, step program. Uh, Friday nights we meet as an open group to just get to know each other and make friends and just kind of open up to what God says about uh, the issues in our life, the hurts, habits, and hang-ups that we all have. Nobody is sitting in here by accident. I don't care if you drove by and said to yourself, I'm turning into the next church that I drive by. Jesus put you on that road, and this was the next church that you came across. And so we're all here for a purpose, and we all have a story. We all have something to share that somebody else needs to hear to encourage them uh, in their walk of faith. And in Celebrate Recovery, we learn that uh, whatever it is that manifested in our lives, whether it's uh, pornography or alcohol or drugs or anger, bitterness, uh, depression, whatever it is that brings us to that place that we're willing to let God in, that's what we learn. And that's we learn how to do it uh, in a group. We learn how to do it in confidential uh, scenarios with sponsors. And we go through a program. We go through steps to peel back these layers in our lives that have held us back and held us away from what God wants to do in our lives. Yeah. Okay, so Celebrate Recovery is more than just, let's say, drug and alcohol addiction. Yeah. There's a wide area of things that you guys are seeing God minister to people about. People are getting healed. People are getting true friendship. They're realizing they can have issues and not be rejected, that they can come and be a part of the group. And so you guys are seeing God do that amazing thing. So your journey started, though, as we talked about this. You both have been leading this. And Shelly, you... I'm just going to jump ahead, but you jumped into Celebrate Recovery thinking you were going for Kenny, right? Yeah. Oh, and then yeah. and then you found <laughs> there were some things God wanted to do in your life, right? Right. Okay. Well, can I start telling a little backstory? Go, go please. Okay. Um, so first of all, I, I'm really nervous being up here. So just so you guys know, <laughs> this is totally outside of my comfort zone. Um, but backtrack before Celebrate Recovery, um, I grew up with an understanding of who God is, that there is a God, but I didn't really know who he was. And uh, up until a point where Kenny and I separated, that's when I started to develop a relationship with God. And it was, he j like, w the day that he left, I was wrecked. I had no idea. I, I thought the only thing wrong with our marriage was that he had a drinking problem, but I didn't see that coming at all. So... I was just an emotional wreck, and I was like, how am I going to do this? I was so worried about our daughter, who was only seven at the time. Like, what, what are we going to do? Her whole world is changing. Our lives are changing, and it's out of control, and I can't do anything. And I don't think I can do this by myself. And that night, God just showed up. And I mean, I never knew that you could have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus <laughs> until he is right there. And I mean he held me and he just gave me a promise that he was going to bring my family around full circle and I didn't know exactly what that meant but he also gave me a verse at the time and it was Proverbs 3 5 and 6 and it was trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight so that was my go-to verse. I clung to that verse throughout this whole process. And um, God showed up in amazing ways in my life. He just met me every day where I was um, for little and big things. Like part of the, the, the breakup, we had to sell our home, the only home that our daughter knew and uh, that Kenny and I built together. And But I, when, when we moved, I got this sense that God was promising that he was going to restore what the locusts stole. He was going to re restore that. So as, the pro as uh, our separation went on, I, uh, I struggled. You know, from time to time, I would struggle. I would have um, doubts, but God would keep drawing me back to him. And I would, uh, here at the church, I started to come to the church because Phyllis, I don't know if she's here right now, uh, Phyllis Hoffman, she invited me to come. So if you invite people to come, invite them to come. Even if they say no, it's important because it changed our lives. I, start, I, just, I knew this was our new church home, and we started going here, and I started pressing into God. And Rose was amazing, and Rose here, she just stood behind me and prayed with me all the time. 
And I remember a pivotal point in our separation where I, I, was, I felt like it was my responsibility to try to save Kenny, to try to bring him to Jesus, because he had once had a relationship with God. He came from that background. And, um, but I, I, being a little bit of a control freak, so I discovered that in Celebrate Recovery, uh, I wanted to control that situation. And one time I was praying with Rose, and she said, Shelly, you need to be ready for when God wants you to move and do something, but do you really think God needs you to save Kenny? And I was like, whoa, you know, that, that hit me pretty hard because I, I was like, I guess not. He's the God of the universe. Why would he need me to do that? So she gave me a tool to, uh, to, sh to do a, a little uh, visualization where I visualized Kenny and I was handing him into the arms of Jesus, and I would walk away and not look back. And it took me several tries to do that in my mind and not look back. But I eventually did it, and I was like, then I would just pray every day, thank you, God, that I can trust you, that you have Kenny, and you've got control over this situation. And as Shelley said, that I had grown up in the church. My dad was a pastor. And they, my parents divorced when I was 13. Prior to going to high school, I'd always gone to Christian schools. So when I got into high school, I got introduced to alcohol. And it was the release that I needed. It was that mask, that cover-up for all the pain and hurt that I had been going through. And that carried right through my ad adulthood. Uh, Shelly, uh, we had met uh, the year that I had graduated and fell in love and got married in 1994. But she kind of monitored my drinking, but it escalated, and it kept escalating. And, it, and one thing about... Uh, sin is that it'll take you farther than you ever thought you could go, and it will keep you there longer than you ever want to stay. Uh, and it, I crossed boundaries. Uh, I had an affair, and my drinking escalated to the place where I thought that I had made this, this unrepairable mistake. And I thought the only way out was to change my relationship, to change my situation. So I walked away. Doing something that I swore to myself that I'd never do and do what, what happened to my parents, but I did, and I walked away. And during that three-and-a-half-year separation, my life went right down the tubes. Uh, I was doing what I wanted. I was doing what I thought I needed to, to fill this hole in my life, but it just caused pain and suffering and hurt. And I just want to give a shout-out, you know, uh, young men and women that are in high school, the decisions you make have an impact on your entire life. So be conscious. Seek good counsel. Get around good people. Um, and that will give you good, solid, biblical uh, foundations to make good, solid decisions because they will affect uh, how your adulthood, uh, you know, uh, progresses. Well, before that, I need to say a few things that, that God did. Like, when I say that he came and met me, he, threw, he put people in my path. He did the, with Rose. But I rem remember one day where I was just having a really rough day, and a friend of mine at work said, let's go to lunch. So I went with her, and she's parallel parking in downtown Belfont. She's, like, nervous about it anyway because she's not a good parallel parker. And there was this guy coming down the street and stopped right in front of the car and stood there and watched her park. And she was like, he's making me nervous. And we're like, why is he standing there? So I got out of the car, and he walked right up to me. And he said, excuse me, but I, I know you're going to think this is really weird, but as I was walking by, I felt like I needed to stop and ask you if you needed to have prayer. And I was like, just wrecked. I was like, I do. And I was, we just started bawling on the street and he prayed for me. And just so he met me in so many ways like that. And, um, you know, just through just did being faithful to me, even when I would get discouraged and turn my, like just my, my will would just be like, no, I don't see any fruit happening. So I'm going to do my own thing. And then he'd pull me back and he'd always pull me back. And, and eventually what happened is, um, he pulled me back, and he was like, I am doing this. I'm going to bring this around full circle. And at that point, I was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm trusting you again. I'm going to give my whole will over to you. And so I was driving to work one day, and I had K-Love on. And I said, God, I need you to show me that I heard you right, that I'm on the right path because I'm not seeing anything. And so just 
on cue, the song Restore by Chris August came on K-Love. And I don't know if you guys know this song, but it was out for a few years at the time, so it wasn't in circulation. It was for me, and I just started to bawl because the message of that song is any marriage can be saved if God's in the center of it. And I was like, whoa, you know. So I was like, thank you. Thanks for talking to me again. So I went to work, and um, God kept telling me, you need to play this song for Kenny. And I was like, no. At this point, we're not even, like, having those kind of conversations. We had been separated for three and a half years. And I was like, I can't do that. If you're the God of the universe, you play the song for him. So I argued with God. <laughs> you don't win when you argue with God. <laughs> So I was like, okay, I'll play it for him, but how am I going to do this? He's not going to want to talk to me about this. How do I have that opportunity? And so Kendra. Right, and, and for, for the three and a half years that Shelly and I were separated, our daughter Kendra, our beautiful, lovely daughter Kendra, who's sitting right over here, wave, Kendra, <laughs> yes. She would pray the, ni the nights that I would have her when we did our, our nighttime prayer. Uh, she would pray for three and a half years. From starting at age seven, she would pray that, God, please help my mom and dad get back together. And that pierced my heart, my hardened, stony, hard, stubborn heart. And, uh, yeah, so, and, and uh, oh, every night that uh, she would make it a way that uh, Shelly and I would get on the phone together. <laughs> like, she would, al we'd always make sure that Kendra called one of us to say goodnight, whoever she was staying with. And then for whatever reason, there was always some reason, like, here, mom wants to talk to you, or here, dad wants to talk to you. And we're like, hey, what do you want to talk about? She's like, I don't know. Kendra said you want to talk to me about something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but she made a way. She made it. She was, she, God used her in that way uh, to get us to communicate uh, for that night. So, um, so that night, we just talked like normal. It wasn't about anything, really. But in the morning, he had sent, I got this text at 6 a.m. from him saying, hey, is everything okay with you? Do you need to talk? And I was like, whoa. Because I didn't do anything different that night. Why are you asking me if I want to talk? And I was like, that's God giving me this opportunity to talk to him. So, And you have to understand that at this point, when she had this uh, visualization of giving me over to, to Jesus, I didn't know any of this at the time, the timeline. But at that point in my life, things went crazy. Like, I had a broken collarbone. I got it uh, knocked out in a fight. It really wasn't a fight. Guy just came <laughs> blindsided me, knocked me out. <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah. sure. That's what I say. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, ended up in the hospital. You know, I ended up in jail because I got so trashed one night. I walked into a guy's house at 4 o'clock in the morning. If he would have had a weapon on him, I, I wouldn't be here. But God had other plans for me. Um, so I got on probation, and I was forced to not consume alcohol for about a year. Anybody who's ever been forced into sobriety, it does not work because you have to make that conscious choice uh, to want change. So about two weeks after I get off of uh, probation, I find myself right back where I started, right back at the bars, right back blacking out drunk. And that was the first time in, in 27 years that I realized I can't stop doing this. I can't. I, my life is out of control. Is unmanageable, but what am I going to do? I've already made my choices. I can't go back. It's 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 beyond repair. Is what I'm trying to say. So I didn't know Kenny was getting this message, and so I'm thinking, okay, God wants me to play him this song. Okay, so I we went to Talleyrand Park, and I played that song for him, and he just started to cry, just uncontrollably, and I was like. <gasps> what does this mean? Oh, my word, you know, like, does he think I'm crazy? Is it impacting him? So um, I can let him tell you what that you know, did. It, at that point in the song, there's, there's a lyric that said what they needed, they, they've been separated doing life on their own, and what they needed was Jesus in the middle. And that was something that we never had. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, that's when things broke for me. That was when I audibly, as clearly as I can ever, have ever experienced God in my life, Heard him say, today is the day. Today is the day you make the choice. Either let me have the junk, let me have the mess, or continue to do what you're doing. And, and I honestly felt like this was uh, my last chance. That's really what it felt like. And I surrendered, and I broke down. And all the bitterness and all the anger and all the, the 
addiction, everything, Jesus just caught in his arms and, and held me up. And it was just an incredible moment in my life. It was a crossroads. It was that turning point in my life. And that began the restoration process. We've begun coming here as a couple <laughs> together. And um, that's where I got introduced to Celebrate Recovery. And I, I walk in my first meeting. Uh, it was shortly after we had started coming here. And I pushed the doors open, and I was like, God, this has to work because I don't know what else to do. And at that, at that moment, you know, he released me from alcohol. But I had realized, I came to realize that alcohol is what brought me. Alcohol is what, the, what all the hurts and all the pain and all the anger in my past was manifesting as. And, you know, I just want to encourage you, you, there is nobody here or nobody in your family or no friends that are so far gone that they're out of the reach of God. That he can, he can, he goes right into the middle of a situation and brings healing, brings life, brings restoration. And that's what we do at, at Celebrate Recovery. You know, we learn to expose these things to God, the things that we kept se keep secret or kept keep hidden that, that are just anchors in our lives. And when you expose them to his grace and his love and his healing power, they leave all that crap out. Mm -hmm. They have no more power over you. And you learn to walk in freedom, and it's a process, and you do it together in community, and it's, it's safe, and you grow together. And then somebody else comes in the door behind you, and you're like, I know what that feels like because I've been there. And you can help them learn and grow and, and, and let God use you to, to help other people too. And it's, a, it's really a privilege, mm -hmm. you know, to do that, to be in community like that. And all along this, Kenny and I never got divorced. He had filed, but the paperwork got lost at the courthouse. So he was supposed to get a letter earlier on in the year when it wasn't a good time for him, but it didn't come. And, it, and, and so we knew God had a hand in that um, because he was ready later on, and he knew that. So, uh, so God uh, restored our marriage, and he you know, brought us round full circle. He's still working on that. And when I told you we had to sell our house before, God also made a way for Kendra and I to have a house. There's a whole side story to that. I could talk to you for 40 minutes on that miracle. Um, but, and then also now he is fulfilling that promise because Kenny and I are in the middle of building a new house right now. So he's doing that too. Um, so he will restore everything in his time. And so we were, um, we renewed our vows on our 20 year wedding anniversary in May of 19 or 2014. And, uh, we've been together ever since. So it's been all like five, a little over five years and he's been sober for five years yes. and leading celebrate recovery the last three and a half years. If you would have told me that he'd be leading Celebrate Recovery like eight years ago, I would have probably laughed because I knew what his situation was. And the way God redeems and the way he restores, and he, he it just blows my mind that he's now helping other people. And I have to give another little plug for CR because I thought CR was just for addiction. And so I was like, I'm going to support Kenny. That's I don't need it. So I went and I learned very quickly that I did need it, that it's, actu it's actually for people going through hurts and, and issues and, and things like that, not just addiction. You can apply it to all areas of your life. So I had a lot of hurt I needed to get through that happened during our breakup and, and, and all of that. And, and so God has helped me to heal through CR, and I've been a part of it ever since. So I guess I'll be a forever CR person. So. That's right. And Jesus, <laughs> said, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burden, and I will give you rest. And that, that's the, you don't clean yourself up to come to God. You come just as you are, all the junk, mm -hmm. all the mess. That's right. You give it to him, and he just embraces you, and he's, he picks you up. 